Hello everyone, my name is Robert Aceves and I'm here with Neil Babbins and today we have another episode of MindFit Podcast and today we have a special guest. But before that, how are you doing, Neil? I am doing pretty good actually, considering uh, it's uh, in between holidays, so... Yeah, I'm in the, in the mid holiday streak, you know, I'm in be- I'm in between <laughs> Christmas lists. <laughs> yes, yeah. and we started December, so hopefully this month is better than the last few months. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> we started this. Dece- we're right. Yeah, yeah. But we- I started making lists about a few weeks ago, and I'm still making them. So yeah, but it's true. The year has gone by incredibly fast. I can't believe it's already December. I know. I know a lot of people are looking forward to 2021 as if 2020 <laughs> was the problem itself, right? That's yeah. somebody made that joke and said, "Oh yeah, January 1st, all your problems were going to go away. That's right. they're just going to fade so. away." Well, I hope so too, but I'm, you know, I'm just like I'm not sure it's the year. It just happens to be a very difficult year. But yeah, um trying to listen to as much Christmas music as I can, um, you know, doing smaller gatherings, of course, social distancing and all that. But um you know, it's it's actually kind of um, fun because you know, kind of replacing, um, you know, the old holidays with the new, and mm-hmm. shopping online has become more exciting because it's really the only thing you could do. You know, I mean, you can go to stores and stuff, but it's just, you know, it's a maybe it's a good thing, good silver yeah. lining that you don't have to like stand in line and traffic and parking and you know, yeah, it's just a Black Friday. I'm not ever doing that. Cyber Monday killed Black Friday this year. So. <laughs> it's definitely a strange year, but hopefully it gets mm-hmm. better. And today we actually have our first female guest and our mm-hmm. second guest in the show. Uh, her name is Tracy Cooper. And Tracy Cooper, or sorry, Tracy T. Cooper, uh, she's from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Uh, she's a writer, a life coach, a nonprofit founder, and a publisher. Tracy has recently started the Bold Agency, which where Bold stands for Believe and Obtain Life's Destiny. It's a nonprofit that was created to evoke meaningful change around her. She's also a an author and a publisher. She's you know one of the best selling. She's a seven time nation best selling author and publisher. She's also the founder of this nonprofit organization called Girl Secure Yourself. Uh, she sounds like an um, incredible person. We're going to be talking about her life and things that happened to her. Um, also, she she published her first novel back in t- 2012. It's called Scandal in the Pews. Um, so with, uh, without further ado, uh, here is Tracy T. Cooper. Welcome. Hi, Tracy. Um, this is Robert, and here's Neil next to me. How are you doing? I'm well. How are you? Very happy to have you. This is you're our first female guest to the show, so thank you so much for coming, and it's a pleasure to have you. How's the weather over there, by the way? Where where are you right now? I'm in Philadelphia. Philadelphia, awesome. Your hometown, right? Yes. Awesome. So tell us about your yourself a little bit. You're we know you're an author. You you've already uh, done so many things, and you you're currently the 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 founder of two nonprofits, right? So one is a nonprofit, one is for profit. Okay. So, of course, I'm from Philly. Um, I am the founder and executive director of Girl Secure Yourself, which is a nonprofit that is geared towards helping women to secure themselves financially, mentally, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. And then I am the founder and CEO of The Bold Agency, which is a publication. It's also a lifestyle agency. So we do life coaching, we do book publications, we do editing, coaching, you name it, we pretty much do it. That's awesome. And now what year did you start the nonprofit and what year did you start your, your for-profit? So the nonprofit Girl Secure Yourself started October 2019. Mm-hmm. So it's about a year old. And then the Bold Agency actually was birthed in the midst of the pandemic. So it started in March of 2020. Okay. Wow. That's great. So this is, was this the, the, the because of the pandemic that you started or did you have it planned before and then it just happened to, to start at that time? So of course I was, I was um, self-publishing my own books mm-hmm. prior to the pandemic and then during the pandemic, I got so many requests to publish others' books. And so I just decided to go with it and, and began, you know, helping others to publish. That's so cool. And what about the life coaching? How long have you been doing that? 
So the life coaching, I actually started classes for life coaching in January. A lot of times I was counseling my friends, you know, family mm-hmm. members, they would ask me for advice and I just figured why not make it a business? That's great. Yeah, that's awesome. Now, tell tell us about what made you start, you know, get started with uh, life coaching. Like, what was your motivation? What made you go like, okay, this is what I really want to do? So I love, I love helping people sort out, you know, sort out the details of their lives. And I'm big on finding purpose in everything. And I think a lot of people, we struggle with our problems and and different life issues because we fail to find purpose in in what it is that we're going through. So I figured if I could implement that in in the lives of more people, you know, they would be able to deal with their issues a lot easier. So that's what brought about the whole life coaching thing. Nice. Very cool. Neil, do you want to? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, no, I think it's great. You've done, uh, started up the life coaching and you, you're, you've been an author since, well, pretty much since the age of five, really, if we trace yeah. it back that far, right. Um, yeah. at the age of five, you, 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 you hit, got the bug, so to speak. Uh, <laughs> it says you gave a, a presentation. Um, was it, what was the first thing that you wrote and what made you sit down to actually say, okay, I'm doing this. So I actually, um, at five, I was in first grade and, we had fire prevention week. So we were assigned to write about fire or fire prevention. And I had just had an experience with my grandfather over the weekend where a pot in the kitchen caught on fire. Mm. So I watched him put out this fire and I was amazed at, you know, the way he put out the fire. And of course I was five. So in my imagination, it was a much bigger deal than it really was. (laughs) Yeah. But, um, that was the first time anyone identified my gift of writing, which my first grade teacher, Miss Latch. She just she was amazed that a five year old could articulate so well. Wow! So it was a teacher who really influenced it initially, right? That was the yeah, yeah, the encoded memory. I yeah. I work with a lot of clients. I'm a psychotherapist by trade, and a lot of the things I talk about with a lot of clients is how our memories are encoded very exponentially and very powerfully at single digit ages. So that when we witness something, we take it in very uh, personally and very egocentrically and in a way that stays with us for life. And it shows up in a lot of our issues later on in life. So that's really, that's amazing that you can identify that at five. And what happens now when you see a fire on the stove? Does anything happen? (laughs) 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 That's funny. Yeah. So so I was going to ask you, um, I know you're um, the BOLD agency. uh, BOLD stands for Believe and Obtain Life's Destiny. And I absolutely love that you, as a female, are empowering other women. And and is your work more focused on women or are you also helping males? Or how's that going? So... Ironically, women are, are drawn to me um, because of my work and, and because they, they view me as someone who's strong. So they're, they're drawn to me, but I do have male clients as well. Awesome. Now, I love, I love that, um, the part where you're empowering other women and you, you believe in yourself and it shows with all your work and the things that you've been doing. So what is one of the, your passions or like your goal in the, in the future? Where do you see yourself in like five years from now um, with all the work you've been doing lately? So my goal for the next five years is to build a charter school. Mm-hmm. Wow. A charter. Um, I want to, imp- I feel like being empowered from a young age definitely affects how you grow and and who you become when you're an adult um and I, i've met so many adults in my life coaching who don't who were not empowered as children or don't feel like they were empowered or encouraged and where i was you know encouraged from a very young age that i could be anything and so that's one of my biggest goals is to to kind of build a a charter school that would mimic a university for children and a place where they would be empowered, you know, from K, K, you know, kindergarten through 12th grade and kind of already have a life plan going for adulthood. Mm-hmm. You'd mentioned earlier that uh, finding purpose is one of the biggest goals um, that can propel a person into action and to um, resolve a lot of life issues. Do you find that there's any other major block um, other than a lack of purpose that usually from your experience keeps people from moving forward from finding their destiny or reaching their potential or seeing past their blocks? Oh, absolutely. I, I 
feel like self-esteem and self-confidence is one of the biggest blocks that I see in others. Um, so many people have been torn down throughout life or have allowed life's, you know, ups and downs to kind of tear them down to mm -hmm. where they lack self-confidence or they lack the self-esteem that, you know, they should have. So I think that's one of the things that holds us back because if you don't believe in yourself, it's hard to get another person to believe in yourself. So that's one of the things I always come to the table with. I always tell them that I believe in you and, and I see greatness in you. I, 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 I'm, ve I'm a very discerning person. So when I meet people, I, I can almost feel, you know, who they are and their energy. Mm. So that's big for me to that self-confidence portion. Mm -hmm. Do you ever feel that somebody comes to you um, either as a life coach or, you know, as a mentor and what they're presenting to you is something that they, this could be perhaps a little bit more abstract, but something that is they, something they think they want as opposed to something that they're actually cut out to do. Do you know what I'm saying? That, absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. Um, a lot of times in, in my analysis, you know, a lot of people come and they say, oh, I want to be, you know, they'll say, I want to be an author. And then I'll say, okay, um, why? Why are, are, what's your passion? And then they'll tell me something like gardening. And I'm like, okay, so how do we make things do? Story about a gardener, I guess, yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. So, like how we marry those two together. A lot of times we, a lot of people haven't identified their passion that, and your passion is what leads you to your purpose. Yeah. So that's a big thing. Like I, I find that a lot of people don't really know their purpose or they haven't identified their passion to unlock their purpose. So, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now it sounds to me like um, faith is a big part of your life. And I was wondering how do you implement that in your work and with your life coaching and your, your writing and uh, your publishing? So, Faith is very big for me. Mm -hmm. um, faith in, in a higher power other than myself. Um, and I, in, in my life coaching, I, I try not to, you know, identify one, you know, one religion over the other. I, I just make sure that my, that my clients know that there's something greater than them that is empowering them and is the power behind them. So, and, and I find that so many people, once I, I open up that, that door and begin to talk about faith and having faith in something bigger than yourself, they mm -hmm. find, they discover that same faith in themselves. So. Okay, cool. Is, is there like a, a certain type of exercises that you uh, tend to practice more? Like I, I tend to practice meditation. That's what I'm asking. And I do a lot of, you know, uh, sitting in silence and you know, counting your breaths and, and focusing on certain things that you want. Is there anything that you practice that you tell your, your clients or things like that? I'm big on meditation as well. Awesome. Um, very big on meditation and aligning, you know, aligning yourself, grounding yourself. I'm very big on those things. And I try to make sure that my clients do those things as well. Um, I practice meditation with them during one of our first sessions. Um, and <laughs> it's, it's ironic when you see that people have such a hard time just sitting in silence, like mm -hmm. <laughs> for yeah. even five minutes. So once they do it the first time, you know, they, maybe on our third session, we'll try it again. I'll say, let's, let's meditate for the first 15 minutes. And then they're, they already have practiced before coming back to me. So then they, they already implemented that in their life as well. I, I wanted to ask you, um, so when when you, you know, we just did a, an episode uh, recently where we talked about values and principles that we've learned in life. Is there anything that you have learned over the years that has been like your, you know, your your one thing that you go to as far as like lessons that you've learned or things that you keep in your heart close to you and that you keep, you know, bringing up to to people. I know you you mentioned a few things already, but is there anything specific that happened to you where you're like, okay, this really made shaped who I am today? 
of course. Um, I grew up in church, of course. Mm -hmm. And one word that stands out to me that I, I is my guiding principle is love. Um, I feel like love covers a multitude of faults. A lot of times we're looking at situations and we're looking at people, you know, from a natural sense. But then when we incorporate love into those things, it changes the whole perspective. You know, if we if we just love people who are sometimes unlovable, if we learn to, you know, love ourselves through certain situations and, and choices that we've made, you know, I, I, I implement love into everything. And I want people to understand that love is the greatest gift of all. So love is, is probably my, my, my biggest guiding principle. I think that the greatest thing I, I hope to do in the next five years is to encourage others to find their purpose. Um, mm. You know, a lot of people, when I say the word purpose, they don't even understand the definition of that word. Mm. And my, my greatest thing with the Bold Agency, um, one of our models is what's water to a shark. And it is because, you know, a, a shark is born swimming. And so what I, I found from studying sharks is that it already knows its purpose from, from birth. It knows mm -hmm. what its purpose is. And so no matter what that shark comes up against, it's going to pursue its purpose. So that's my, my, that's the thing I want the rest of the world to know. I want, when they think of the bold agency or girl secure yourself, they think of that shark and understand that you were born with purpose. And because you were born with purpose, there's nothing that you, no mountain that you come up against, no height or depth that you're, you come up against that could change your purpose. It was already in you from, from before the time you were brought to this earth. Mm. Excellent. Mm -hmm. You know, and when you talk about love, I absolutely love what you said about love, by the way. Um, I, I found that, you know, through meditation, I've been practicing for almost 30 years in Zen meditation. And one of the things that happens to me, like every time, you know, I meditate for eight days in a row or something, you arrive at love. And I feel like almost every religion, I don't know all of them, but, you know, most of them, I, I think, arrive to love, right? That it talks about loving thy neighbor and, you know, love, love, love. Um, but the one thing that I always ask people and I would love to ask you, Tracy, is what, you know, how do you show love to yourself and how do you, you know, what actions do you do and how do you tell your clients to show themselves love? So I show myself love in different ways. You know, mm -hmm. that could be, you know, acts of faith, you know, me just taking a moment to breathe because a lot of times when we're going through life, we don't take an opportunity to breathe. We don't take that opportunity to just stand in the moment. So mm -hmm. I find that small things for me are acts of love. Um, you know, allowing myself that extra hour of sleep or rest, allowing myself to turn off the phone and disconnect from the rest of the world so I can just sit with Tracy is an act of love for me. Love it. <laughs> the flowers that I, I may have wanted someone else to send me uh -huh. is an act of love for me. You know, whatever it is that I want from the rest of the world, I have learned to give it to myself because that's an act of love. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you tell the same thing to your clients to do it, to, to turn off their phone. Turn off the phone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, awesome. electronic devices. Deep, you know, it's okay to unplug from the rest of the world. Yeah. Do you love traveling, by the way? I absolutely love traveling. Yeah. What is one of your favorite places that you visited? Oh, gosh. So my favorite place on earth, this is going to be, you know, it's such a common place, but it's my favorite place on earth. It's Las mm -hmm. Vegas. Las Vegas. It's <laughs> Neil was just there. I can understand that one. Yeah. Yeah. I was. Place on earth. Yeah, I was just there a couple weeks ago. And even in the midst of the pandemic, they're doing pretty well at holding things together. But I told a friend of mine, it's kind of like going to a um, a business that gets closed down, for, is closed mm -hmm. for business, but they're still open to the public. 
you know, yeah, yeah. The lights are on, but nobody's home, really. You know what I mean? And but it was still, you know, still, still bustling. But I hear you on that one. Yeah. yeah. I guess everyone's purpose going to Las Vegas is, uh, you know, <laughs> to to have fun and to keep it in Las Vegas, right? And to win money. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> is is there a, a common? You've written a lot of books. Um, and some of them are, are quite recent. Is there a common theme, would you say, throughout the books that you've written? Absolutely. Self-discovery is, is one of the greatest um, themes in all of my books. And my characters evolve um, from, from my first book, which is Scandal and Abuse. All of my characters were kind of self-centered and they were, they were self-driven and they weren't, you know, they were in relationships and, and marriages and, you know, friendships, and they were so self-centered. And then when we got into book two, they started to evolve, like life started happening and they started understanding that, you know, their purpose was connected to another individual. So they started to evolve. And, and now that I'm at book number five within that series, they have, the evolution is incredible. So when you meet them now, they're, they're totally different people mm -hmm. than they were in book one. Hmm. Like a mini series. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Would you say this characters relate to you in, in some ways, like the way you've been evolving in your life? Oh, absolutely. 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 One of my, my um, characters is a lot like myself. She's very driven. And she knows what she wants out of life. Mm -hmm. But of course, you know, in life, sometimes we take, you know, we take the low road or we cheat. We try to cheat our way through. And, and we may be able to accomplish some things but you really don't accomplish those great things that you really could accomplish until you do it the right way, until you actually, you know, delve into your purpose, until you actually follow your destiny. So one of my characters is a lot like myself. Hmm. Nice. So do you put um, stories from your own personal life into your novels or is it all things from your imagination? <laughs> Absolutely. I, I, I use things from my own life, my friends' lives. Strangers, I'm a people watcher. So I'll put them all. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Vegas is good for that too. Yeah. <laughs> it's one of my favorite places to write, actually. Oh. I'll, I'll go out. I, I went to Vegas in February. Mm. And of course, it was my birthday, but we, I wanted to go. I wanted to just stay outside. Like I wanted to be out in the malls, you know, in the casino because I like to people watch. And then when I would get back to my room at night, I would sit up and write for hours. Like, mm hours on end because I people watch and I created my own conclusion about what was going on. <laughs> yeah. And you got to love the food in Vegas. It's so good. <laughs> yeah. The buffets. Oh my gosh. Even though I don't know if they're doing them right now, but no, the buffets were closed, but there oh, was still no. a lot of great places to go get takeout. You know, the still the, the variety is amazing. You know, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I think some of the best in the world. So, um, but tell us what what about your own personal life? Are you married? Are you are you single? What's going on with that? Uh, I'm I'm not married. I am in a relationship. It's pretty cool. Um, I've found balance in that relationship because I'm a little bit. I think prior to this relationship, I was growing up, and so now in this relationship, I had to come into this relationship as a whole person. You know, we say fifty fifty, but both people have to be whole people. So this relationship is great. Hmm. That's pretty cool. What What do you think? Um, who Who's drawn to you the most? I know you said females a lot. Women are drawn to you a lot. But what specifically? Um, what What um, What presenting problem is the most common that they come to you with? Um, or and or and or what demographic tends to be drawn to you? What do they typically? What's their first opening phrase to you? That they don't know what they're supposed to be doing. That <laughs> is <laughs> the first thing. That's like I already know <laughs> when I open up the job forums, you know, in, in, in my client portal, I already know, I open up and it's like, I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. I don't know why I'm here. You know, like things like that are, are, a, are a reoccurring theme. A lot of people don't know their purpose. They know that they're born to, and this is another thing that they say, I know that I'm supposed to be doing something great, but what is it? Mm -hmm. It's, that is a reoccurring theme within, within the boat agent. Mm -hmm. And even Girls to Cure Yourself as well, because it's a place where women come to discover themselves. Or if you have discovered yourselves, it's the place that you come to evolve and pull mm -hmm. off some of those layers that we put on in discovering ourselves, mm -hmm. trying to, you know, protect ourselves. 
Right. Do you find a lot of people after they've worked with you a little bit drastically change your life 180? They just turn it around? Absolutely. It, Absolutely. Yeah. I'm, I'm super proud of my clients. Even my, my authors who are signed to the Bold Agency, their evolution is absolutely incredible. Um, I have an author who just dropped a book in July about her 14 year drug addiction. Mm. Um, and she was some, someone that I knew prior to launching the Bold Agency, someone I knew since 14 years old. And I had no idea that she struggled with this addiction. And to know that she had a, an addiction for 14 years and to now see her evolution is simply incredible. I mean, just in, in four months of, of who she has blossomed to be in the author world and, and able to speak freely, it is absolutely incredible. That is incredible. So um, for those of you that don't know your agency, um, what would you tell them would be your ideal client? Like wh whoever's looking for one specifically, do you think would greatly benefit from you and your um, company? The Bold Agency is for everyone. Um, mm -hmm. Whether you have discovered your purpose, whether you are trying to discover your purpose, if you are bold enough to believe that you can obtain life's destiny, the Bold Agency is for you. Um, I, I, I cater to people who are a bit eccentric because that's me. I am, you know, I have a very wild imagination. I really believe that, you know, I can be whatever I want to be, you know, or I can, I can attain whatever it is that I want in life. So I just, I, I would say the Bold Agency are for those who are daring. Mm -hmm. Love it. Yeah. Neil? Um, yeah, so... Um... How many clients do you have right now in, in the Bold Agency and how many would you like to have? <laughs> right now, I have about 10 clients that I'm working with uh -huh. um, that I have other clients that are retained, but they're, we're not working on anything in spe anything specifically right now. Uh -huh. I have about 10 clients right now that I'm working on projects with and or life coaching. Uh -huh. And as far as how many I would like to work with, as many as, uh, you know. Off the page, <laughs> right, right. Exactly. Right. Um, I would actually like to see the Bold Agency be an international agency. So I'm looking to expand my territory. Okay. Awesome. And are you are working on something right now as an author? Are you working on a new project at the moment? Ooh, I am working on several projects at the moment. Um, my characters are impatient. <laughs> I'm writing two books at one time, which is a juggle, but <laughs> it's working out. Very Great. cool. Yeah. I was going to ask you, do you have any projects um, in the in the future for movies, like maybe something you're planning to do in that sense? Absolutely. Absolutely. We just we just worked on something um, on my writer's resume and and submitting one of my books as a script. So we are absolutely in the process of making a movie. Um, I am going That's to be awesome. In the new year, we'll be dropping some content so you'll be able to see what that movie would look like in small portions like trailers. Very cool. So, yeah. So if, if, if somebody has never heard of you prior to like listening to this podcast, let's just say, what would you recommend? How, would, how should they get started knowing, knowing about you? What should they read first? What should they look up first? I mean, I know it depends where they're coming from, but say they're very interested in what you're talking about finding purpose and in the characters you're talking about, what should they do first? Where should they look first? So if you are a reader, you can find me on amazon.com, um, Tracy T. Cooper. If they are wanting to know more about the Bold Agency, they can find, the, we have a website, it's theboldagencyllc.com. It has lots of pertinent information. Uh, you can schedule a free consultation with me. Um, the consultations are very cool because it's it's passion to purpose to profit. So we talk about your passion so that we can unlock your purpose and ultimately get you to profit. Um, also, if you're interested in Girl Secure Yourself, which is an incredible, incredible nonprofit for young women ages eight through older women, 88, which is the oldest person I have in my group right now. Um, you can find us on Facebook, Girl Secure Yourself. Girl Secure Yourself also has a website and store. It's girlsecureyourself.org. Excellent. Great. Wow, that's a lot of, you, you really do a lot of things. I'm very, very surprised yeah. of how much, you know, we've been learning over this period of time. Uh, so I always ask people, like, we all have something that we do that's kind of weird, like, but we love doing it anyway. <laughs> is there anything that you like to share that you can share that <laughs> is kind of odd about you, but that it's cute maybe in some way? 
Wow. Um, <laughs> I'm thinking. Kind of weird. Like one thing I like to learn obscure languages. That's one thing about me that's weird. I mean, <laughs> randomly, I learned a little bit of Norwegian. And as a result, one of my best friends is from Norway now that I've learned a little Norwegian because she saw it back in the day on MySpace. She saw a little blurb that I wrote in Norwegian. She wrote, uh, Snack of the Norsk, you actually speak a little Norwegian? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> uh, and it was just people like, Why did you learn Norwegian? I said, I have no idea. But I'm glad I did, you know? <laughs> so that's what that's. that's, I, that's yeah, I, I like to put ketchup on my pizza, which you know, most people find very weird, but I love it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, it's just glorified marinara sauce. It's just glorified ketchup. Right? Like, okay. <laughs> okay. So I, my, I think my only thing that I have that's that's weird is I like to like if someone has an accent, I love accents. So I'll also like <laughs> automatically if they're speaking to me, let's say they're like from from the UK. I've done this. I did this in Vegas. Like there was a lady I met and we, we became like instant friends and I, I wanted to talk like her so bad. So if I hear an accent, I'll mimic the accent like, you know, and my grandfather was from Panama. So I learned a lot. <laughs> like I've been around him for so long that I can I can I picked up on the accent like I can automatically like switch over to another accent. That's so cool. That's yeah. awesome. So do you speak Spanish too or or no? Uh, very little. Very, very little. Very little. Any other languages? Uh, I do know. I, I, I did study French in college and high Ooh. school, but I, I know, you know, a few words, not not enough to speak it fluently. That's cool. Not enough to get That's lost in Paris. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. Right. That's awesome. Yeah, I, I, um, I think languages are so cool, especially as a writer. I think it's probably yeah. handy to know French, right? Because you can use yeah. a lot of words in, in your writing. So mm -hmm. um, also, can you just very quickly um, tell us more about your process as a writer? Like, how do you come up with an idea and how do you go about implementing it? And then, you know, how do you write your books? Because I know you do a lot of stuff. And for someone who wants to publish as well, like, what do you require from them to, to be able to publish with you? Okay. So my process as a writer is very strange. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> my, I, like I said, I get a lot of ideas from people watching. Um, but my last idea is my, my, my two books that I'm working on right now, as I said, this, this, this series is all about self-discovery. And so one of the things that I found that was so important to me was um, a lot of people have a page in their life that they've never read out loud or that they don't want to read out loud because they feel like it's embarrassing. But I found that that page is the most empowering. Um, a few weeks ago, I told a story of myself 10 years ago. And most people were absolutely floored because they never would have thought that I, I, I've I encountered homelessness or joblessness, you know, mm -hmm. that I was in a place that most would call rock bottom, but that's where I found my purpose. And so being able to simply put that out on social media for me was the most empowering moment of 2020. And so I decided with the book that I'm writing now, I wanted to... I wanted more people to be encouraged to talk about that, that moment that they found their purpose. Mm -hmm. So like I said, my process is very strange. Mm -hmm. um, I, I have learned to outline, even though that's not something I do, I create this little snowman, right? And the snowman is a head, a body, and then the feet. And so I use that snowman concept to say, what do I want the readers to think while they're reading this? What do I want them to feel? So that body part or the heart is what I want them to feel. And then ultimately, what do I want them to take away from the story? And then I, I use my snowman to, to kind of begin outlining chapters and, and figuring out who needs to say what, what are, what are our transitions? What are the lessons that are gonna be taught within these chapters? Um, and for a, a write, for someone who is starting their writing journey, um, I am in January, I'll be launching a book. It's called Bestsellers List Me Please. And it's basically my entire process from A to B, from finding your title, from, from finding a title that, you know, is going to pull people in from finding a, the right cover, you know, every, all of my processes, the, the outlining, um, that moment when you get stuck, what to do when you have writer's block, the, the bestsellers list me please journal will have all of that information in it. But what I tell writers is just keep writing, find your niche, find that thing that empowers you to write. Like I love music. So 
it, and it's any kind of music. I love country music. I love any kind of music, um, <laughs> gospel, whatever it is that I'm feeling in that moment. I'll I'll turn on music. It could be Beethoven that day, and I'll use it to fuel my writing. So whatever it is that you love, you know, I have some writers that say chewing gum helps me write, and it's like okay, chew the gum, you know. <laughs> so. I absolutely tell them, find your niche, find the thing that you love, incorporate it, and let that be your fuel to write it. Love it. Excellent. Excellent. That's awesome. <laughs> now, yeah. if if somebody wants to come to you, though, and they, let's say they've already gone through all that and written something, uh, what is your process with that? So if they're, they're, they've already written. What I ask them to do is do a submission of your first three chapters of your book. <laughs> what I do is an analysis. I try to make sure that I understand the genre, the direction that you're going in, and how we're able to market that book. You know, even some people come and they're like, I know this is bad, but just read it. I never think anybody, <laughs> of, it's kind of like how they say in school, there's no stupid question. I don't think anybody of work is a bad body of work. I feel like there is an audience for everyone. So the first part of that is you submit your, your few chapters, and then we would have a discovery call. During our discovery call, I would give you your analysis and tell you what I found in your writing, where I think you would be most influential. And then we talk about the publishing process. I'm big on teaching the publishing process because as a young author, I was robbed. So I'm very big on teaching them about the publishing process. You know, that there, there's like a scripture that says, uh, if you teach a man to fish, like he'll, you know, fish for the rest of his life. And mm -hmm. so I'm big on teaching them how to do it. You know, I'm not, I'm not saying that I, I don't want them to sign with a bold agency, but I want you to also be empowered. Mm -hmm. You said you were, you were robbed as a young author? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. wow. Okay. Twice. Any word of twice whoa okay. wow. oh my gosh wow so two fish got away okay so so um any any word of caution for young i mean obviously contact you but any word of caution about people who are oh, wanting absolutely. to push yeah yes yes um uh, as a young author i i simply signed with the first publication that offered me a contract and I did well, I did very, very well. Uh, my book came out on August the 15th. By August 19th, I was number one on the bestsellers list. And so, and, and my book was selling amazingly. I had a, a book release, you know, party where I, I, I released my paperback and sold out within minutes. And so the book was very, very, very popular, but my publisher went missing. I mean, oh, like, wow. dropped off the face of the earth. And mm -hmm. of course, I never received a royalty check. Mm -hmm. um, the other part of that is, and then I signed with another publisher because she she looked like a hero to me. You know, she came and she said, oh my gosh, I recognize your talent. I, I loved your book. You know, I can help you to get to this plateau. And she made all these promises. And then of course I got suckered in and I signed with her. And the exact same thing, I never received a royalty check. And that's because we're putting our faith and our, our work into the hands of other people. After that experience, I empowered myself. I learned how to self-publish. I learned how all of the principles that they were using to get me to the bestsellers list, I learned those things. And so what I, I tell people, of course, I want you to sign with me. However, I want you to be empowered. I want you to read. I want you to read every word of this contract. And I'm very fair in, in contracts. So I make sure that this doesn't just benefit me. I want it to benefit you because ultimately this is your body of work. Mm -hmm. So um, I tell them to read, make sure that that person, you know, do do some research on that person, find their their better business bureau, make, you know, make sure that they're certified with the Better Business Bureau, make mm -hmm. sure that, you know, see what their their other authors are saying about them. Don't don't discount what other people are. Reviews are our best friend or, or our worst enemy. So make sure you're asking the other people who are who have published. How, how is this person? Make sure mm -hmm. just make sure you do your research overall. Right, right. That's 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 important because there's so much publishing going on out there, you know, self and otherwise. Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, and people will get easily suckered in because they're so, you know, wanting to have this happen. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So, do you have any last questions, Neil, before we end today's podca uh, podcast? Um. No, that's a lot. I'm. Um. <laughs> so yeah. Um. Okay. So who, again, they should look you up on the bold agency. Is there anything specific that they should, anything else they should do if they want to contact you and find out more? Um, 
I mean, you've already said, but is there anything specific they should do as soon as they get off the podcast? They want to contact you. you. Where do they go? Look, look me up on the Bold Agency is also on Facebook. I'm I'm on Facebook as well. Um, I have an author page on Facebook as well as the Bold Agency page. So the Bold Agency um, on Facebook, and then myself, Tracy T. Cooper. You can also look me up on Instagram, Crowned Air Inc. Um, on Instagram as well. Okay. Perfect. Are there any any last words that you like to say, Tracy, to our audience? Any messages, anything you you love to for them to know? Uh, the only thing I would say is to find purpose in everything. I know we're in a very strange time. I know that this is a trying time for everyone, but this this time came for a purpose. And and if you're struggling with the time that we're in, if you are, you know, maybe a little depressed or stressed about the time that we're in, try to find the purpose in it. I promise if you find the purpose in the time that we're in, it will make it so much easier to get through. Very well said. Very true. There's always a silver lining, isn't there? Yeah. As the paradigm shifts. By the way, one last question. Do you do any (laughs) other formats besides novels? Do you do things, people write plays or write short stories or poems, anything like that? Can they also contact you? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Great. Awesome. I love your energy, Tracy. Thank you so much for everything. It was a great interview. We love to have you again sometime in the future. So you're always welcome to come back. And thank you so much for everything. We'll, uh, this will actually air next uh, Tuesday. So you'll know uh, when it comes out. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and thank we'll you see you soon. All right. Thanks. Yeah. Talk to you later. So much. All right. right. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you so much, Tracy, once again. And there you have it. Um, This is our interview. Thank you so much for everyone who's been listening to us for a long time now. Uh, Remember, we're here every Tuesday at 6 p.m. So we'll see you next Tuesday. Thank you to all the people who've been donating. Please follow our guest. She's an amazing woman. So she would definitely help you if you want to be a writer and publish your books. That, That would be one of the best ways to do it. She sounds amazing. So please do. And if you have any questions, uh, comments, or concerns, please send them to us. You can either send us an email or send us a message on Facebook. We have our Facebook page. Uh, Remember, you can also watch this uh, interview on YouTube. So we have our YouTube channel, MindFit Podcast, So and and YouTube. So thank you. Thank you, Neil. Any last words before we go? Uh, No, I just love what Tracy was saying about finding your purpose, you know, passion to purpose to profit. I mean, well profit is is subjective but yeah finding your purpose what is your purpose and uh, like she said in in inside of this par- inside of this pandemic you know there's a paradigm shift going on so there's so many things that we can take a look at because our lives are changing um and in what ways does that open up the areas of thought that you know helps to define purpose i really like that I like that a lot very inspiring yeah me too yeah. yep all right thank you so much and we'll see you next time then see you next time This podcast is brought to you by MindFit. Please help us to share this podcast with your friends and family to grow this community. And if you'd like to donate to this podcast, or if you'd like to share your comments, questions, or concerns, send them to mindfitpodcast at gmail.com, or you can call us directly at 714-328-4661.